in the malls. But actually, what we are seeing is that there's strong retail sales despite inflationary pressures, supply chain disruptions, and this actually bewildered people given that we have sky high inflation as well. In other words, what I'm saying is that people are spending all the money that they've got. They're not saving at all. So um, you've got the likes of Target, Amazon, Walmart, Costco, TJX, Lululemon, Shopify, Wayfair. These are just some stores that you normally think about. Of course, there's Macy's, Foot Locker, Big Five, Dick Sporting Goods, Nike, Adidas. Think of any retail store that you frequently go to, uh, whether online or physically offline. And the assumption is that it's teeming with a lot of sales. The first thing that we want to share is number one, trading management. If you are looking to trade positions this next few months, because we are in the best few months of the year, we're, we're talking about November, December, until January. This is what we call the Santa Claus rally. We want to take advantage. Number one, if you're doing a fast money principle, because you're highly concentrated in a sector, it necessitates closing wrong positions or reversing a move. Let's assume that you are of the belief that retail sales are not as good because of supply chain disruptions and inflation. Actually, that's wrong because the earnings reports of all the, at the very least, all the ones that have reported already are showing strength. So we personally don't have short positions, but I surmise there could be hedge funds out there who shorted Beth and that. Bed, Bath and Beyond, and therefore I would be happily taking their money if I was along, and I would even go long, long, long Bed, Bath and Beyond, because the numbers show us that it's not just Bed, Bath and Beyond, but it's also an, a number of our retail stocks that are going up. And it's not just simply because Kroger and Bed, Bath and Beyond happen to have a strategy of e-commerce pivot, because almost all stores are doing e-commerce anyway. Number two, it necessitates adding winners. Uh, uh, answer this call. Okay, um, number two rule, if you really want to make fast money, and this is really the best time to make really huge fast money, it necessitates adding winners and largely holding them further until the trend stops. So hold them them further. How do you know until the trend stops? We'll try to give you some tips and guidelines chart-wise. But essentially, when you see a sector strength, well, last month we saw that happen with the likes of Tesla, with the likes of all these clean energy and climate change summit uh, really punctuated that strength. We already have a lot of winners and I would say that you have more reason to hold them further until the trend stops. So it necessitates adding winners, whether it is the same sector or just more shares of that name that you already own. That's also possible. Now, number three, largely ensure you have the strongest themes by your side, supported by improving fundamentals, raising guidance, growth at all. What do I mean here? We've got earnings palooza this week, this month, next week. Every week, we have a lot of earnings results. We have to see them raise guidance. So it's possible, example, I'll give you an example. Tesla's doing well, but NEO actually is more of a sell in the sector because while NEO is actually in the right sector, electrics, it isn't doing as well versus example an XPeng or a Li Auto. So you have to validate that you are in the right theme, you have the right theme by your side, but the fundamentals of that company has not been racing guidance versus the others in the competition space. So for instance, you have a Lucid Motors, you're in the right theme, you are in the right stock, at the very least, you are in the electric stocks, like uh, electric vehicle stocks, whether that be Lucid Motors, Ford, or GM. But if you compare Ford going up, GM going up, you have to still do a trail. Because one day, we never know if that trail stop breaks, I would assume that you are also out. 
Then again, congrats to everyone who made a lot of money on the EVs, but that's not the end. Um, you can never know the end until it breaks. So you have to really use your trend lines to show to you that it's over, you know. So um, you, you can't really say. As long as it's still in the trend, it can still go higher and higher. Okay, so when a trend is clearly strong up or down, you just have to follow now, this is really a trading management principle, especially if you're highly concentrated in a sector because any volatility on the upside or on the downside could actually mean 40-50% moves on your portfolio if you're doing a trading management style. Obviously, if this is more of an investment management style, nobody, I would assume, would invest 100% of their portfolio in one sector. Although maybe maybe if you are having a small portfolio, that's fine if your portfolio really represents a small percentage of your total net worth. But, well, but let us assume that you are not trading a small account. Definitely, if you are investing a huge amount of your portfolio, um, trading management just allows you to make sure that your sector is in the right sector. So these are just rules. Uh, then let's get on with it. So awesome to next buy list. There is a sector that we love and we have been covering these sectors. Mostly these are called reopening themes. Live Nation, actually forget about this Ford Motor and GM. Sorry, because uh, I had a sector play. And um, although you might wonder why EVs are here, actually that's a wrong, uh, just wrong, wrong. <laughs> Wrong category, but e either way, yes, for then GM because it's very strong. So obviously, this is a part of the EV trend, not part of the reopening trend. But what and the batteries as well, like quantum scape for your batteries, those are all part of the climate change electrification trend. Nonetheless, you'll notice that part of the strong sectors as well that we are covering are outdoor names, reopening names, whether that be Live Nation, SeaWorld, even a casino like MGM, BYD, or Boy Gaming, Caesars. Of course, you've got Walt Disney, the typical outdoor stock, or even an airline like Global Jets. You can say American Airlines, Delta Airlines, United Airlines, Boeing, Southwest, JetBlue Airways, and of course, your retail names. Your retail names are actually mostly necessitated physical stores and reopening recovery, mobile traffic, you know, foot traffic. So um, it really is a great recovery if the world is reopening and it can be shown clearly through the charts and the earnings results. So a few things that I'm also taking a look at for next week, um, stocks that I'm reading or looking at, these are not in the theme of, uh, not, it's not necessarily a buy call, all right? I'm just going to be reading upon them. I'm bullish on Auster, Boozy, and Triple D systems, but I'm not sure what will be the reports next week. Nonetheless, I do expect a good report. Um, Auster, for their efforts with integration with a lot of top automakers, that is something that I want them to talk about. Uh, electric cars, how, how the vehicles and the, automatic, uh, and the automated self-driving vehicles necessitating Auster. Now, for 3D systems, what I want them to discuss is a lot of regenerative medicine since DDD has partnered with a lot of breast cancer patients. I want to see how they're helping uh, their healthcare stands for bioprinting those uh, memory glands for those patients. Now, for Vuzi, I really want them to talk about the metaverse because we've seen in the headlines all about the wearables. So I want them to share how much they have been integrating the wearables, not simply in the gaming space, but most specifically in the hospital and the army and all the Walmarts and all the um, industrials that are using Vuzi blades. So more on the enterprise customers. That's what I want to hear from their earnings call. Now, you'll see November 9, we've got a sector, uh, a lot of stocks are reporting. To be honest, every week, it's like hundreds of companies uh, reporting. So these are just a few of the stocks that are in my watch list. Palantir, obviously, I am very bullish on that. I want them to discuss about how high they, they are still growing when it comes to their growth. Ballard is more of just the same play. I expect them to do well given F-Cell, Plug, Bloom Energy have been doing well, getting commitments, getting, you know, like, example, Fuel Cell had a had a partnership with ExxonMobil. So I want to hear more partnerships for Ballard given the entire trajectory of the world, investing more in fuel cells and hydrogen, uh, hydrogen, um, Hydrogen fuel cell. Ng ear, yeah, wait, uh, lang. Wireless, babe, I need to move your phone to digital. Okay, let's go. All right. So that that said, of course, next week I want to see specifically 
um, the Bulls continue to control the reopening narrative, whether it be SeaWorld, Party, Donut, Donut meaning Krispy Kreme. So Krispy Kreme has been doing very well when it comes to e-commerce sales. I want them to show in the next quarter another strong blockbuster sales. Now for Neo, it's reporting next week, but I think it's more of a take profit and a sell before the earnings because um, actually when you look at the monthly sales of electric vehicles, Neo has been losing out against Xpeng and the Auto. And of course, Tesla, and of course, Wuling Motors. So there's really a ton of cars that are being sold in China. And um, I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but on a short-term perspective, I think that 44, 40 air, 45 area for NEO could be a lot of profit taking rather than hitting $50 and above. Now for November 10, obviously I'm very bullish on Disney. I want, Disney does not give race guidance because Disney is Disney. But um, I want Disney to discuss about box office movies coming up next year. Uh, how the recovery in the theme parks are going on, even if there's still a lot of restrictions. Notice, we're not just simply about talking in the US. Disney is a global company, so not everyone can actually go to Disney. You've got some Chinese restrictions in Shanghai, Disneyland. Um, you know, there are a lot of things to contend with when you're Disney, which is a global company. So I want, uh, actually listening to Disney is going to give me more ideas on how reopening in the world is happening. So it's very crucial to listen to the Disney Investors Relations call. Fiverr is more of a freelance platform. I'm not bullish on it, but um, I think that you know it, it's worth it to understand how this remote, remote work world is really uh, happening. Anyway, there's so many jobs. Um, it's, it's something that I need to listen into, more of that. App H was very disappointing last quarter. So I want to know how they're trying to recover or is it another sell-off gap down quarter? So I'm not sure what's going to happen. So I'm more on the sideline here. But I want to see if App Harvest manages to turn around their company in three months, then I want to listen to it. Innovis, I'm also going to listen because these could be some turnaround plays, uh, given that Innovis has pretty good uh, partnerships with Mercedes-Benz, for instance. But I want Innovis to tell me if there is a reason to be bullish on them. Now, on November 11, um, I am still hesitant on Chinese names, but obviously all these shopping galore in the U.S. is already telling you that inherently online and physical e-commerce, commerce and e-commerce, both of them are doing very well. Industry is growing. So Alibaba, I expect, would have a pleasant surprise in the earnings. But what would be the reaction of the market? Because at the end of the day, people could also sell on good news every time Alibaba reports good numbers. So <clears throat> I'm actually hesitant with China. Also, I'm hesitant with Cron and Sundial. Cannabis names would be reporting um, results next week. Chrono, Sundial, Grow Generation. So um, I'm not actually bullish upon them. But I want to just see... Am I wrong for not being bullish? So I'm actually sidelined. I'm not bearish. I'm not bullish. More of just sidelined. But I just want to read up on cannabis numbers based on their earnings results. So I want to verify if my thesis on cannabis that it's slowing down or it's not worth investing upon is correct. Now, of course, Array should be, in my view, doing well, but it's already priced in given the entire climate change summit. Um, Laser, I believe, will do well. So I want to get validation next week. Berkshire Gray Automation should also do well. Same for ArcelorMittal and Tapestry. Among the earnings coming out next week, the ones that I'm most bullish upon would be Palantir, Disney, and Tapestry. The rest, I, I am, I'm, I'm more on the lookout on them. So I'm bullish on LIDARs, but I still need validation from the market. Like even if I'm bullish on Laser, Auster, and Inovis, I, need, I still need bullishness to be confirmed by actual earnings. Actually, it doesn't have to be earnings. It has to be revenue growth. Now, um, a few things that we are already aware of in terms of the recent earnings results. For now, we can say that Americans, like U.S., if, if the company is largely getting their sales in the U.S., Americans are continuing to fill up, fill in all their shopping carts. A steadily improving health situation, a resumption of business activities for ac active social lifestyle tells you that this is very clear with a Peloton earnings call. Everyone's going out. Everyone's going out and about. They're not at home. They're actually in concerts. They're actually outdoors. So um, active social lifestyle necessitates shorting a peloton. In fact, uh, if you do not have a short peloton, in fact, maybe this month, you want to actually, if, if ever you are long peloton, 
you want to reverse your long peloton to a short peloton for entire six months or seven, eight, nine months, because this improving health situation will mean negative situation for peloton. A sense of confidence among consumers. Now, this could be surprising for other people, but when you read up on results of Louis Vuitton, uh, luxury goods sales, Capri Holdings just jumped up last week, this week. So um, we're talking about super, super, super strong growth. And um, I'd say that the spending spree has been um, true for September, October, uh, and we are probably going to see the same thing happen for the next holiday season, shrugging all the concerns related to rising prices, supply chain disruptions. Now, that could have been catalyzed by what? Number one, people could have been buying a lot of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Therefore, um, these Americans feel rich. They're, uh, they don't really feel any problems since Ethereum is trading at all-time highs. Solana and all the cryptocurrencies, all the cryptocurrencies are mostly up. So my view is, and Tesla's mostly up. And my view is that the majority of Americans are all owning, well, not majority, but the retail, okay? We're not talking about the hedge funds. Let's talk about just the retail investor. The average investor would have owned some some, some bits of cryptocurrencies or some bits of Teslas that I would surmise that's one reason why they don't feel poor. They actually feel a little bit rich enough to spend. Uh, so um, we're seeing strength on Amazon. This is probably going to go all-time highs next year. Um, Walmart looking to hit all-time highs on the earnings call. Sea Limited, still a shoppy play. This is a Southeast Asian play, uh, but also looking uh, undeterred. This is still going to be all-time highs likely for the sector, sector move. Now, when I talk about people going out and about concerts, yeah, people are going out to concerts, outdoor entertainment, outdoor lifestyle. While everyone's talking about metaverse, 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 it's also true that People are so sick of getting stuck up at home, stuck up on their homes. They're so sick that they want to go out. So obviously, vaccinations have happened and Live Nation trading at all-time highs is a trend we believe that will be all the way up until next six months. Any dips will be bought, 90, 100. These call options, if you have 90 calls or 100 calls for the next three months, will be a yes on our part. SeaWorld, so already good earnings last August. And we are seeing just continuation to the all-time highs for SeaWorld, which means that people are betting aggressively on the long side on reopening before the earnings call. So either these people are so bullish because they've probably seen the traffic in SeaWorld. This chart tells me that I am, okay, I'll tell you what, I'm very bullish on Disney call options. If I'm wrong, so what? But I'm long Disney call options. Seeing the entire segment, the entire results of many companies show super strong move on the reopening. Six Flags Entertainment, not so strong, but um, we are seeing this still at higher lows. So it tells me that from a theme park standpoint, um, Six Flags is not anyway the top one, right? So it's 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 a given that uh, it's not supposed to be that strong. Tapestry, this one I'm going to be bullish upon. Earnings coming out November 11 next week. I'm going to be bullish here through call options. Through call options, you can buy a long call here about $37 or even at $30. So usually I go deep in the money. So I'll go for a $30 call option. I think that, and then, and then of course, if it's $40, $40, I'm willing to pay $10 to $12 to $13 for that call option. I think it's going to go back to $50. So $30 goes $50. That means the $10 call option goes $20. If I manage to get a $10, although I don't think I can get a $10 call option for tapestry, I might as well pay something in the 12 to 13 areas. Capri Holdings, this is what I'm saying. Retail sales, the ones ahead, have been rising already even before the earnings results. So um, this is uh, actually, sorry, this one reported earnings this week. And uh, if you can notice, that was a move from 50 all the way to 66 or 30 plus percent within the week. So this spectacular strong direction growth tells me that all the longs are very much confident it's going to go back to 70 or 80. I forgot to put in fetch. Wait, far fetch. Uh, let me show you the chart of that. Uh, wait up. Uh. So I've been investigating mostly retail names as I think uh, my portfolio is underrepresented with this entire move. Okay, far fetch has not reported numbers. Farfetch is reporting on November 18. Okay, uh, given e-commerce is very strong, I surmise that you have to be contrarian buy on some e-commerce names, even if the chart has not re responded yet, because it's more of a thematic sector play. Look at the exporting goods. It's already done well on May and then on September. I think that this November, it will still be a good earnings play for the exporting goods. 
I'd buy 100 calls for this and um, 100 calls. I usually want to buy deep in the money call options when I make bets so that I am cushioned in case in the next three months, it actually consolidates. Because the problem with call options, if it's not deep in the money, is that if it consolidates, even in a very good earnings, your call options will automatically go down to zero um, just simply because of time decay. So when I do calls, I do deep in the money calls and usually three months ab above. On my uh, on my time frame, Under Armour did very well. You can see that gap up. So retail stocks in general this week reported numbers. All of them passed with flying colors. So um, you can read through the earnings results yourselves. But this is a simple trading guideline that these are gonna go higher to, uh, I guess, 27, 28 for Under Armour. You wanna buy 20 calls for these Under Armour. The lower the better, of course. Of course. Now Krispy Kreme is a donuts. Donuts, just retail donuts, right? But uh, we already saw very strong reports last quarter. And uh, this entry point to me is more of a double bottom. I'm going to be a bit of a contrarian here that Krispy Kreme at about $13 and $10 call options would do very well. So I'm going to go a deep in the money long call strike on Krispy Kreme next week earnings. Wayfair, okay, Wayfair, this, uh, my opinion on Wayfair is that it's going to be strong simply because we already saw Home Depot also do well. So these are more on the furniture store, the furniture side. Wayfair already rose from about $25 to 255 That's why it might have been people just wondering how high can this go? Not really about the sales numbers, but uh, simply because the valuation. Nonetheless, if you're buying somewhere at about 220 you may not buy it, but I think that we are more on the cap that this one is going to go back to $300. So um, more, uh, we're, we're on the bull cap for Wayfair. Etsy was uh, another strong move, all-time highs last night. This one necessitates reading the exact earnings report. Um, after, you know, after a few months, after a few quarters of uh, some, some supply chain disruption, right? But Etsy managed to go up, up, up in all-time highs. So we better get to read this. Uh, with, with online commerce sales doing very well, uh, it just tells you Amazon, Etsy, Shopify, uh, Wayfair, Target, Costco, the, 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 the entire picture is the same, all-time high moves. So um, if you see uh, Nike hitting all-time highs, I'd also want to say that the other uh, sports-related stocks would also go up. Foot Locker is likely to go higher and the earnings will validate that. People are already buying it up before earnings because they're already seeing a preview on other stocks. Big Five Sporting Goods reported earnings kaboom. So this one went from 24 to 42. Obviously, that's a profit-taking move. But if it goes down to about 28, 26, you've got some buyers here. Um, or maybe not. You can just buy something that hasn't reported results yet. So what I do here is I look at the sector, the theme, and then I choose what stocks have a very low risk and still have a catalyst, which is an, an upcoming earnings earnings report within the week or next week, next two weeks. Now, pets, no online pet store. So if you have a pet like a dog, most likely you're buying stuff online. So look, look, looks like the, the holiday sales and retail sales are undeterred with any inflationary pressures. So uh, we are looking at buy call here. So even dips of Chewies being bought. These are very bullish candles. So um, overall, the, the charts are sharing the same thing. Kupang is an IPO. This is a Korean e-commerce. Think about Korea of Amazon. Amazon of Korea. So I'd say that 67 all the way to 25, this drop has been related simply because of you know, past earnings calls not doing so well. So this is more of a contrarian take. Nobody still wants to bet on Kupang. But I'd say that with the upcoming earnings, especially since holiday retail sales, people want to bet on holiday demand. So we can actually make a bet long call on Kupang at $25. So these are risky if you're going to go do call options. So usually what I do is I set, I, I look at it from a thematic standpoint so that if I have three to five themes, let's say I have a Disney, I have a Kupang, I'll buy a tapestry. Hopefully if I choose five names, I'll go at least three over five or four over five so that my mistake in one could actually be negated with my rights with the rest. So that's really how I play call options. It's a numbers game. Bath and Body Works. So we saw Bed Bath & Beyond do well. Took a look at the sector play. Bath and, uh, Bath and Body Works, same thing. So these are more on the um, toiletries. Like uh, these are bath soaps. So people are really, you know, um, these are called consumer cyclical. So if you're spending on soaps and candles, it's not, 
it's not a lot of money, I agree. But still, um, it just tells you that discretionary spending is quite a lot, no? Because these are, I mean, how many, how many times do you have to wash your hands? And how many times do you have to do those uh, perfumes? So, you know, those things are more on the luxury, uh, simple luxury side. It's not expensive, but it's also not necessary. So discretionary spending seems to be going wild, um, still, still, still strong. So Bed Bath & Beyond, this one is what I want to bet upon, given that there's a short squeeze, given strong numbers, strong collaboration with Kroger. So this one is more of a buy for me. I'll go long, Bed Bath & Beyond, $20, over, uh, $20 current level is okay until 18 And then uh, obviously, I believe in the management turnaround capability. Mark Triton uh, came from Target. So I like the management. Ever since uh, we, we think that uh, Bed Bath & Beyond is not just a meme stock. Actually, it's really a good retail stock. So I want to get in on these uh, memes. Target Corporation. So Mark Triton came from this. You now you can see how, uh, how strong Target Corporation has been over the last few decades. We're talking about decades here. So Walmart, Target, Amazon doing very well in their craft as well as Costco. So this is just all-time highs. Actually, the recent pullback, I, I noticed to buy, um, I was I was looking looking to buy actually 230, but I didn't execute that. But uh, happy to share that actually if had I executed that, hitting all-time highs and actually going to hit more all-time highs upon earnings. Um, the, the market is already betting ahead. So you can see that even before earnings results, if it's already trading at all-time highs, people are showing confidence, consumer confidence and stock market confidence that retail sales are all going to go blast off with super race guidance for, for their earnings results. So those are buy-ups. Look at Costco. These are amazing moves for $100 all the way to about $500. So super strong moves, actually, like uh, look at the, the way that uh, this moved, like from March all the way 320 to 520. Um, the problem here is that retail sales are strong because the market is already high expectations as well. The obstacle is not to reverse the trend, but simply because, uh, simply put, it's just going to be about guidance. If the company manages to have very good report, but they say, I'm not sure about the guidance next year, that's when it will sell off. So, but but the but the entire apparel retail consumers, um, the charts all paint the same story. It's really confidence in consumer spending, which is a bit weird. I don't know if you're surprised with that. Um, you've got sky high inflation, and yet you also have rampant spending, consumer spending, and you have a lot of supply chain disruption issues. So it seems as if the only rational explanation that I can actually tell you is that. It's likely that a lot of Americans have so much money. I don't know if it came from cryptocurrency wins, if it's stock market Tesla wins, or I'm not sure how they have so much money to spend because stimulus is, of course, ending. Uh, or they just are loaded. Probably, probably it's just the third world effect because Philippines, we, we are losing jobs. We aren't, I don't know. I, I mean, it's just a different world, first world versus third world. Either way, um, the first world countries seem not, they don't feel any pressure. There's no problem in their spending at all. They don't have any, I, I mean, they don't have issues. <laughs> Unlike Philippines, we are still thinking about how we will reopen recovery. Do the people have money? How about inflation? It seems as if that those problems are not a problem in the US at the very least. Even the shipments uh, seem to be uh, not a problem. I don't know. It's it's weird. It, it's like tale of two worlds. Rich rich country and poor country, maybe. Okay, so Macy's uh, doing all time high. So this is what would happen with shopping malls if we are back to the mall. So Macy's have been doing very well. Six dollars. This was a twenty dollar breakout since last quarter, and it has been continuously strong. So um, earnings results coming out for Macy's. I'd say that it's gonna be a blast off. But this is already fifty percent up, so it's already a momentum game now. It's not gonna go probably um, twenty seven to about forty. Any dips are gonna be bought by the market. Just showing you momentum is now super strong on the retail. No, the momentum names. Look at this, Hibet. But this is more of a sports play. This is also an outdoor play, so similar to a Foot Locker. Notice movement, $70 to $90, even before earnings. So, um, you know, if you think about it, I showed you the map. I showed you the sector heat map so that 
you know, right now the only buy call is maybe Bed Bath and Beyond, Tapestry, because the earnings are coming out and you've got a squeeze play, probable, probable. No, but but you can also see that if you if you have been betting on retail, congrats, because this reopening sector on retail has been doing very well. So you can also argue that if I'm bullish on Disney, it's not because of an empty call, no? It's because you can see how strong consumer spending are. If they're willing to buy bags, shoes, and uh, all these uh, clothing, I'm likely betting they spent a lot on the theme parks as well. So Disney would show really good numbers come November 11th. Uh, Adidas, this is a V-shaped recovery, even if they mention supply chain issues, disruptions. So the thing about Adidas, Nike, the company's production is not meeting the target production. And they're actually worried how much they could produce because apparently the sales are doing well. So sales, are, sales is doing well, but they might not be able to hit all the demand because um, they couldn't produce because of so much supply chain disruption. Look at Nike. Uh, when they made a mention during their earnings call that they had a supply chain disruption, the market actually did a contrarian buy. So it fell uh, from about 160 all the way to 140, but the market bought it up anyway and then nearing all-time highs. So chances are what's happening here is that even if uh, a company discusses uh, difficulty in meeting demand and they don't want to talk about raising guidance, um, it's likely to that they're just trying to be conservative. The truth is that the demand is there, but there's still ongoing supply chain disruption. And that's true for Apple, for Nike, for, uh, for a lot of these uh, global brands. The more global your company is, the harder it is to meet your demand because of supply chain issues. How could you actually make sure that all of your, your sneakers um, are being sent all over to the stores? No? So a lot of people don't want to buy old inventory stock as well. This is Puma, also trading at all-time highs for Europe. This is Lululemon, also trading at 475. So what you can clearly see is that while they don't want to... Um, you know, they don't want to do workouts at home. They don't want to do Peloton workouts. They don't want to do in the treadmill, but they still want to be in fashion. So they're still buying a lot of athleisure clothing. Um, clothing from Lululemon, Nike, Adidas, sales have been doing well. So yun. <clears throat> Abercrombie and Fitch, the same story. Look at that. Best Buy and Co. So this is more of an electronic equipment. So if your son or your father or, you know, family members are techno geeks, Chances are you're buying gadgets from Best Buy Company or Amazon, so all-time highs as well. But this is more of a big cap. So look at that, also strong movement. Home Depot, in case uh, you're so loaded, you're furnishing your home, furnitures, all the same, no? All, all of people are shopping online, shopping online, um, buying things for the furniture and homes. Ralph Lauren, Ralph Lauren reported great, strong third quarter results. So actually, because this is still in the console here about one, two, five, I am of the view that this is also going to go higher to all-time highs. We made the buy call last year uh, around November uh, here at about 80. And actually, the fact that it's not yet doubled anyway, it's still a function that with recovery, uh, it's not late. You know, you've got a lot of reopening themes that you can still make money from. Now, obviously, Airbnb reported numbers already last night, and it was a beat. So Airbnb is just a trend is your friend type of name. It goes to a 200 rather than 160. So any dips would be bought. When, uh, here at 178, if it ever drops near 169 or 165, those are buy calls. So, so what, you do, what you should do here is just simply buy a 160 or 155 long call option on Airbnb and assume that it's going to go to 10 within the next three to six months with this entire reopening. And some people do it through travel plays like Airbnb. Um, others did it through a Marriott hotel. Uh, but in general, what you're simply seeing is that travel hospitality industry is doing well. Other people are scared to bet on airlines, obvious reason because disruption on oil, you know, they could be paying too much on oil. They could have very bad earnings. So, you know, you could be correct in your reopening theme, but you could be wrong in execution. So it will still be very risky from an earning standpoint to bet on, on, on any airline because, you know, we still have $80 oil to contend with. It's not as if like the earnings of airlines would just suddenly recover. 
uh, just because you have people traveling. So there is still a better way, which is just go for travel platforms. So I'll go for travel platforms rather than airlines itself. And of course, Disney, because this is a long-term call option anyway, whether you believe in the reopening or the movies, you know, box office hits are coming out. You usually want to watch movies and you want to go to theme parks. You don't just always want to go to Netflix. So in, in any case, I'd say Netflix would be more of a take profit area here at 660 area while you use your money from Netflix to shift to Disney. That would be my call. I, would, I could be wrong. You know, Disney could not go up. Uh, Netflix could still continue higher. But I think that for the year, even for next year, there's really a strong underperformance on Walt Disney, despite the fact that earnings have been pretty strong. And, uh, and despite the fact that Netflix is actually getting less and less subscriber additions over the, the last few quarters. Every now and then, they have those squid games. They want to expand their revenue stream, adding more strategies like merchandise, adding mobile games, adding their metaverse component. But I tell you what, people who are not buying Disney before the earnings, in my view, I'm not saying that this is a loaded dice. It's just that 90% of all the data you read tells you you have to be more in the convict. Uh, conviction trade that this is going to be a better buy uh, even if it just goes to 200. Now, I'm not saying that we're going to get a blockbuster move, but um, it's a well-managed team. That's why. That's why you want to be, you have to have this on your reopening bets. Uh, now, I could be wrong. For, 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 all, for all things, this could go $160. But even if it goes to $160, I'd likely just hold on anyway. Uh, so I really don't care if I'm wrong on my calls. Um, so this one is more of a tricky thing. Global jets, I know that people are traveling, reopening is back. So if you really believe in reopening, obviously you want to bet on all the airlines, whether that be Boeing, whether that be United Airlines. One simple way to do it is to check the global jets. It could be a play April next year um, because not every country is really doing well. So, so my view is that this one will break out somewhere about April next year, April 2022. Because it's uh, an uneven recovery. I'm not sure how many countries have opened up. But uh, yeah, Europe has opened. US is open. But a lot have not. So we'll see. We'll see how, it, how things go. But yeah, bullish on this. On a, but this is a weak bullish trend. This is not like momentum moves. Like un, un, unlike the, the Nike or just simply betting on a Lululemon or just simply betting on a on, a, on an Amazon or a C Limited. You get my point. Like, there's several ways to play reopening. And actually, you would wonder this too. If people are reopening, how come all these e commerce sales are still doing well? Apparently, um, you know, it's a behavioral thing. Uh, they are shopping online and also offline. So, both strategies are doing well. It's not just the physical stores, but also the online stores because it's just convenience. I think most people love to shop online um, if they can. Uh, it's, it's habits. It's, it's really behavior. Look at uh, also a few things. So I said next week, it's going to be reporting numbers for your uh, 3D systems. So we already got some, uh, some good, good preview on the industry. Desktop metal expanded triple management uh, manufacturing capacity. I'm still long desktop metal. Stratasys, I wasn't long, but uh, I'm looking to, I'm really long on the sector of 3D printing. I'm happy that, you know, Stratasys did not disappoint on earnings last night. This went from $32 all the way to as high as 42 or a 30% uptick move. So this is very positive on the sector. And my view is that if you've got 3D printing names, you should hold on to them. Um, the, the chances of getting a bullish run prior to earnings or after earnings is still high with or without a really good earnings report. Sometimes it's really more of the fact that people could see the industry is getting strong. Automation. Actually, I want to listen to Berkshire Gray. Why? Because Berkshire Gray is all about robots and automation helping the likes of Amazon. Berkshire Gray's client is Amazon, all, all these e-commerce giants, because e-commerce cannot do all those boxes um, to ship all those boxes. You still need some robots. Even JD, if you take a look at their war warehouse, you know, they handle what, 10 million boxes a day or sometimes a billion boxes a single day if it's a single day sales in Alibaba. Uh, 
Yeah, sorry. Uh, my 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 mistake. I yeah, that's true. It's a billion bucks. I remember reading that statistic and I was like, "Whoa. A billion boxes in a single day for Alibaba." That's like amazing. A billion and like how many people are there in China? A billion people as well. So, I mean, it's like everyone has a box gift on a single day. So, it's impossible for a human being to fathom how that can be done with labor and human hands. You have to have a robot do all those things. And you can imagine how much trash there is as well. That's why we largely believe in sustainable packaging and biodegradable uh, packaging. Because uh, at the end of the day, all those boxes are still paper, right? I mean, you still have a lot of trash to contend with. We have to recycle a lot of th things. Okay, so 3D Systems is going to report next week. Uh, we had very good numbers already since May and then this. So last few quarters already did well. So I just assume another good quarter. And um, as I said, 3D Systems has become one of the largest uh, regenerative medicine. So it's not a 3D printing play today. It's also a healthcare play. And because I believe in artificial organs, um, I do believe in that, you know, if you are sick, you would probably want an artificial, uh, artificial, I don't know, like let's assume you're a breast cancer patient. You know, you have to think about how to solve your problem, right? So you, you do that, uh, fake stuff. Like, I don't, Right now, it's not for the, uh, they're not doing it for the vanity sake, all right? So they are doing those breast implants because these patients need it. So uh, that's really, and you know, what, what goes after that? After aesthetics, it's going to be a lot of printing of hearts, printing of liver, you know, uh, humicide does that. So I, I believe in the trend. So you, you could you could say that I'm the sometimes the first part for a trend could be an aesthetic reason. You know, people just want to have um, you know some some men like it uh, and some women like it. So you know they, they like that. So yeah, that it's it's uh, 3D printing, 3D printing those um, memory glands, boobs, etc. You know that that's that's a trend. Okay, so let's take a look on your. Questions. Why is PayPal down? Thoughts on PayPal earnings? Uh, I actually haven't read the report, but I think the reason why I'm neutral on PayPal and Square is simply because, you know, last quarter, PayPal's earnings results were already very good. And I was already hesitant because the technicals of PayPal were going down even before the result. So I was a bit more on the cautious side. Um, let me see the results. I haven't read the results. Um, Third quarter results. Have it reported. Has it reported na ba? 3Q. <clears throat> Maganda na kasi yung PayPal results ever since last quarter. For the third quarter, estimates pa lang. I don't think nag-report. Hindi pa siya nagre-report ng earnings. Nag-report na ba? Let me see. Ah. Pero um, even Square had a muted reaction. So this has nothing to do with them having a, a tough year. It's just simply because they are so many. Uh, you know, when you are Visa, MasterCard, Square, um, PayPal, it's possible that it's just in a neutral zone. It's not a sell. It's, it's more than neutral. Neither bullish, neither bearish. But of course, long term, it's good. Um, let's see. Square says Bitcoin demands load. But it is picking up back in October, okay? So it has to do with Bitcoin. So people were less buying Bitcoin. Obviously, at higher levels, people have a hesitancy to buy at 60,000 Bitcoin rather than 30,000 Bitcoin. Okay, or, or even, even uh, 10,000 Bitcoin a few quarters, a few quarters ago. And less than 10K, of course. It was less than 10K a few years ago. 5K, 3K, and so forth. Anyway, so let's take a look on PayPal. Uh, yeah, so before the earnings, PayPal was already selling off. So sometimes I'm very cautious on going long, If um, even if I'm bullish the entire fintech, simply because <clears throat> you don't you don't have an insider advantage on, on the reason why it's underperforming. So, okay, let's see. Actually, there's no results yet. Numabas na ba earnings? Wala pa oh, November 8th, after market close. Next week pa. Hindi pa lumabas yung earnings. But I think the market is not betting that, uh, that uh, PayPal would do well. 
um, usually if the market is very confident, they would have bought it at least to 250. Eh? So um, I had the PayPal call option. I actually exited at a loss because I'm, you know, if if a stock shows to you technicals wise uh, that it's underperforming, my problem. Why am I saying that? I don't know the reason why, but uh, I don't see a reason why it goes down on a technical fashion. So there is something that I don't know about, which I will uncover after earnings results. If I haven't read the earnings, I won't bet. Okay, um, for Peloton, we already saw how bad the earnings were. So the, the outlook is actually to keep on shorting Peloton. Um, if you have a Peloton, you want to actually reverse that to a short. Uh, Peloton is likely to go down from about $65 all the way to about $40. Um, it already opened after hours, I think 25 to 30% down. So it was already um, a question mark if $85 or $80 was going to hold. Why am I saying it's $40? Because the company already admitted, number one, that they are expanding their business model towards the lower and more less affluent regions. So that means that uh, Peloton used to be for the affluent, you know, the people who are doing cycling. Um, and now they're trying to go down, you know, to a lower, lower, uh, lower. Uh, they want to be cheaper, more accessible, more affordable. Usually that business strategy, it could be uh, cannibalizing their brand. Because Peloton as a brand is like Lululemon. Um, and I don't know if them going down scale is a good strategy. Plus you've got people, the general outlook is people are reopening. This is evident from Peloton's call. This is evident from the Roku call. Both Peloton and Roku are going to be short-term sell-offs in my view. So, um, and usually in the next six months, that will continue to be true because Peloton cannot actually reverse their business within a, a slip second, right? You, you can't do that. You, you, can, you can't do that uh, in just a quarter. You know, you can't change a business within a quarter, at least a year sometimes for others. So um, in the short term, what would happen with Peloton is all the momentum is investors will be gone. And what happened to Fastly for an entire year is what's going to happen with Peloton. So if you have Peloton, I suggest sell it, either shift it to what we know is going to go up, like a Fastly, a turnaround play is Fastly. Uh, you could add more on a Qualcomm. Earnings results were very good there. I think uh, there are plenty of opportunities for you to be long upon. And for, for Peloton, it's just going to be more of a short, short, short. Um, but it might not be easy to short when it's already gapped down 30% a night. So if you will short it, probably short it at 60 to 70. So you have to have um, two to three levels on selling a, a, a Peloton with a target maybe of about a 50% drop. So uh, a 30% drop is not over in my view. Uh, if there will be a rally towards a 20% drop from down 30 to down 20, then you can still continue shorting. Um, for DraftKings, I think the problem last night was Penn National Gaming reported very bad numbers, but I think it was more on Penn National Gaming itself. It was a company-specific thing because uh, if you look at the casinos in general, they're not really suffering. So um, I don't want to speculate what would happen on DraftKings, but seeing how reopening stocks have been doing well, DraftKings really has to do with online sports betting. So because online sports betting, in my view, is congruent to no number of sports events, I'm of more bullish case. So uh, I still have my DraftKings longs. Uh, I have a call option on DraftKings. But obviously, uh, I'm willing to also lose money in case I'm wrong. Um, <laughs> immersion is... Well, Immersion is a very small company. And so, I know, um, I wouldn't say that Immersion is a bad name. Immersion fell about 30% last night on earnings, right? Uh, because it was an earnings miss. This one is, I'm, I'm, I'm more uh, of a contrarian here. Actually, here at about $7, I think it's going to go back to 8 and 9. End of the day, if you think about haptics technology, Immersion is one of the strong ones there. Actually, there's no competition so far. That's why... Sony has no one else to work with except Immersion. So that tells me that the technology is there. It's more about how many people will actually adopt virtual reality, uh, even if Facebook wanted it to happen overnight. It doesn't happen overnight. So you have to be careful with your Copen Vuzi. You have to be aware that it's a, more of a buy and sell. Um, 
because it takes time before people are wearing glasses all over. Even Apple glasses said it's about 2023 to 2025. So um, that said, of course, everyone's preparing for that wearable world, that virtual reality world, whether it's Microsoft, Facebook. Microsoft has their HoloLens, Facebook with Oculus, and so much. So um, it depends on your own time frame as well. Ashford, my view here is that the market wants to believe in travel hospitality industry, but Ashford is just simply lack of momentum. So you've got 14, 13, a lot of buyers, but obviously every rise to 15, 16, 17, you've got a lot of sellers. So because there's so much money with retail, um, the best view for the money, you know, the best bang for your buck is go for the likes of Bed Bath & Beyond. Um, so what I've been doing personally is I exited all my weak momentum names because if it's very weak, uh, sayang, there's so much opportunity costs that you are missing out upon. No? So you have to really be fast. As, as I said, in the trading management, if you want fast money, sayang kasi, we're talking about the fastest money in the next three months. So you don't want, the principle really is if you have something weak, Sample, I actually have DraftKings in stock. I sold that. Kasi sabi ko, okay lang, take a loss here. Because I can just use that money to add more on CCJ. And which I did. Nag-add more na sa CCJ, I could add more on Qualcomm. Kasi you always have to think about the not really the risk on the stock. Eh. It's about, you have a high conviction example in Qualcomm. And you're up 100% your call options on Qualcomm. Why won't you just add more na lang? Kasi obviously, any dips, Qualcomm, you will have a buyer. Race guidance eh. ba? Qualcomm, NVIDIA, dire diretso yan. So what I'm saying here is that it's not about the specific company. It's about how much money are you losing for, um, for not betting on the right names. So it's really more on that. Um, Copen, I'm really trying to sell at 7.2 and then I'll hold the rest till about 8, 9, 10. So the beautiful thing about Copen is that earnings is finished, so you won't have a gap down. And even if it goes down, let's assume, you have a lot of buyers at six below, diba? Why would it fall? Sometimes it will only fall because some people are just taking profits. Why? Because it came from 4.5. So sometimes people will also not take profit. Like example, what happened to the battery sector? They didn't take profit. QuantumScape is still trading at 33. Let's assume you erroneously sold at 29 to 30 because you thought, well, it went from 17 all the way to 30. Shouldn't that get some profit taking? Apparently not, diba? So, you know, it's very hard to determine how high is high. Um, but I personally am, am willing to exit 50% to 100% moves. So because Copain started from about 4.5, 50% area is somewhere at about $7. So I'm willing to usually exit 50 to 100% from the low. Not from my cost, from the low. If I was able to buy at the low, swerte ko na, na I'm 50% up. But obviously, I'm usually not able to buy at the low. So let's say my cost is about 540, 530, 550, 570, I even added. So yung mga yon, because I kept on adding, adding, adding onto my copen, you cannot, you know, because I've added onto my winners and I'm holding a concentrated portfolio onto copen. You know, I have to be very clear with how much exposure I want with that stock. So it really depends on you. I don't want to go 100% in one stock only. So after a 50% run, I'll also be profit-taking. And that cash would be cash. Sometimes, you know, it will mean a lower upside in case it goes 8, 9, 10. But that's really how I trade. Um, if, if I'm doing a high exposure move on a sector... Chances are anyway, guys, there will be so many sectors to trade upon. So don't think about it. Um, the, the thing about like the, the weak names, no? Yatsen and Douyu, Chinese names are a sinkhole. It doesn't matter if they report good numbers because the market doesn't really care. Sometimes that's a problem. When you are as a sector, a weak sector, if it goes up, the only thing that people would do is sell on rally. Sample, Peloton and Roku, what would happen there? In the next six months, people would just sell it. So why will you actually want to get it? You know that people would sell it. So um, um, you don't need to buy it and you don't need to sell it as well. I don't care if you don't want to sell it. But the point is you don't want to be involved in it 
when you can make money, fast money, especially elsewhere. Now, other people have money stock and losers. And usually the priority is, well, if you don't have cash to deploy, either those losers are really put in your long-term cabinet and it will really rot there for, I don't know, as long as it takes. Look at what happened to Fastly. It took about six months for Fastly to recover. So that's going to happen to losers. Peloton and Roku can rot for six months. You know, that could happen six months or a year before it actually breaks above and breaks above the gap down. So you have to consider, I'm six months trapped or I'll use the money now and trade something else or invest in something that you know is raising guidance, something like a Qualcomm, for instance. Okay. Um, Lemonade has not reported any earnings results. So Lemonade, I kept it. I, and I'm actually winning on Lemonade. So I sold when it rallied 100% on the pet insurance product news because I held Lemonade call options. But um, I held a few pared because I want to know how the numbers will be. Lemonade has done pet insurance, car insurance products. Millennials love it. There's momentum there. Lemonade is neither a buy or a sell. Right now, it's more in the neutral support place. But because I'm bullish on the fundamentals, I'm willing to buy it. There's a question and I'll answer this. How do you manage weak stocks, which was previously strong and heavily loaded? Example, Humble. You cannot actually avoid it. If you are wrong and long, you are long, strong, and wrong, you have to really, no choice. If you have to cut it at 60% down or 70% down or 80% down, 30% down, it doesn't really matter. The question is, Sometimes people have a problem, but I tell them, because I had to sell a third, you know, I'll, I'll show you, um, I had to sell a 30% down on Yatsan Global, but I had to sell what, 20 to 30% down on my Chinese names. And I'm telling you from a percentage perspective on the portfolio, um, it's in the millions of pesos. It's still a lot of money. From a portfolio perspective, I was really killed on the Chinese names. Um, and I had no choice but to exit at a loss because I said to myself, look, it's very clear to me that this is going to go all-time highs when it was trading at $800, $900. So either I, got, I go long Tesla at $800 to $900 or I go long these sun powers here at about $23 to $25 and assume that it's going to go $30 and $35, which it did. So I was telling myself I better go long on an end phase at $150 all the way to $175 because if this goes up, you know, all these Teslas are rising. I'd rather take part in a clear conviction trend, clearly strong trend, rather than wait for my Yatsen to go up or wait for my doyu to go up. It doesn't mean that I have not believed in Yatsen Global or doyu. But the problem is that Chinese stocks at the moment, no matter what they are, are being sold off. So I actually advise people, even the ones who had Alibaba at $180, I told them you have to sell it at $170, $165. I mean, what's the point of holding, even if earnings are coming out and we... And, even, let's assume earnings are really doing well for Alibaba. I mean, there's no question. Alibaba is a great company, right? But um, and earnings will probably go go, go big. You know, Tencent just released uh, uh, their their cloud operating system called Orca. Uh, but, but I said to the people who have these Chinese names, you know, my my um my my perspective simply is. If that money does not need to make money in the short term, then I don't care. I mean, it can rot there. But if that money and you are really seeing, you can make about 30, 40% in some obvious trends. Sample, I'd rather be betting on a $5 copin rather than waiting for Yatsen to go from three to four. End of the day, five goes to seven is faster than three to four. For, for, and you think about it, the percentage is the same, right? So you had the metaverse play, you had the $5 area support for Copen. What was I going to do? It doesn't matter. I don't really care about what holdings you have. I don't even look at the position exposure. My view is simply, well, where's the money flow? No, it's very simple. If I know the money flow is straight to Captain Planet, what did I do? Voila, Captain Planet, everything. Batteries, solars, nuclears, uraniums, lithiums, everything. It was just really that. So I don't really care about your position. You have to take note, where is your goal? 
if your goal is simply, I want to make money fast, shift it entirely to Qualcomm. I mean, obviously, $145, $150, people are buying it up, right? It's obvious naman eh. Sometimes when you know that the trend is clearly strong, you just follow it. Why am I saying that? Because obviously, about a month ago, I already knew naman. I already knew that the market was buying up Cloudflare. The market was buying all these cybersecurity stocks. So what did I do? I sold my Roku at about 3.30, and, and if Roku goes to 20, I'm going to buy it back next month, next quarter, next six months. Not because... No, no, nothing wrong, you know. I like Roku long term, connected TV, but I also think to myself, Roku at 340, even if this goes up, it goes to 360. I might as well exit at 340. And my cost was 370 for Roku. I sold it at a loss because I said this money from Roku is going to go to the likes of charge point at $21. It's going to go to the likes of Sunrun at $48, $47, which I lead to $59. So it's more of think about where the money will be deployed first. And really, at the end of the day, well, I think that Roku is not going to move up anyway. You know, you think about the stocks that are not going to move anyway. So you might as well, uh, if I don't have cash, I might as well, diba? Alis mo na lang to, alis mo na lang to, alis mo na lang to. Kasi mababalikan mo naman eh. I mean, I tell, them, I tell people, what's wrong if you sold, uh, I sold like Alibaba at a loss. And then um, if I am very determined that China is going to have a rally, it's not as if I, uh, it's not as if I am not looking at the market to not know that tomorrow is the day that I bet on Alibaba again. It's, it's more of that. Like, I am confident that when China gives a turn, I'm going to be there at the same price as where I sold it. Or if I'm wrong that, let's say I sold Alibaba at about 170 and it actually magically breaks 185 or 190, I need to have the conviction that it's going to break 200 and go to 20 for me to go long. And until I have that conviction, I wouldn't actually be in a hurry to enter Chinese names. This is also the reason why I exited my pin to at 102. I cut loss on my foot to at 72. You know, my Chinese losses are quite huge, guys. But I managed to turn all of those losses into less losses by simply capturing the opportunities in front of me. It was already wrong for me. Personally, I feel as if it was wrong for me to miss out on obvious secular trends like cybersecurity running up at all-time highs. I can forgive myself for other names that if I miss it out. But cybersecurity is so obvious to me, eh? like CrowdStrike. Uh, Cloudflare, you know, all these very strong infrastructure platforms. So I think it's a personal judgment. I don't have any problems with uh, with names kasi if I really don't have high conviction with, um, how should I say this? Kasi for me, cryptocurrencies are so strong. The fact that Humble is at 64 cents tells you that it's not a cryptocurrency or even if it is, there's an outlier massive mistake from a company perspective on that name. Because um, obviously, all the cryptocurrencies naman, Binance trading at $600, Ethereum trading at four five, BTC is trading at about $60,000, diba? So it isn't like, I, I thought, example, I'll tell you what, Square, I thought was a crypto play because obviously people can buy crypto through Square. But apparently it's not, no? Or, or, or the earnings are muted, no? So it's possible nga na if you thought Coinbase is going to do well, Possible after earnings, it gets sold off. Because eh? even if people think that Brian Armstrong's Coinbase is doing well, it's possible too that these people aren't buying as many as people hope. That the demand, the buy and sell transactions are not as many. Because what if these people who bought will hold the lit and stake it and stuff? Will there be transactions? No. There wouldn't be any transactions because they all bought already a few, a few weeks ago, a few hours ago, a few years ago, a few months ago. So quarter on quarter, there will be slowdown in the trading uh, trading action of these currencies, cryptocurrencies. So um, Coinbase reports tonight, and my sense is people are bullish ahead of the earnings, but there could also be a sell-off if there is a decline in terms of sales growth on, on Coinbase uh, platform. Diba? And there's going to be a lot of competition, by the way. Uh, that's the thing. F fintech is, I'm neutral on fintech. Why? Because there's just so many. Like, um, like I could just put all my 
crypto in a phantom wallet, right? And I, I, I just stake it in radium.io for Solana. I mean, what if I don't put it in Coinbase? What if I don't put it in the likes of Square or PayPal? Because I don't believe in those platforms. Um, you know, what if I put it in my Binance and stake it there? There's so many fintech alternatives. That's uh, Linux, there's thousands. There's thousands in crypto alone. And there's a hundred in, in, in centralized world alone. That I, I, don't, I don't know how... I know that Square and PayPal are doing very well, but at the same time, with so much competition, I would rather watch things first because I know they're growing, but I don't know how much the market will pay for them. Let's say they grow 40, 50%. Is the market happy with that or should it, or should it have been 100%? Yeah, but that's the thing. Eh? Uh, Square and PayPal might be about an expectations game rather than their actual earnings results. But you won't have any problem if you're looking simply on cash flows and earnings. Right? But, but Square is muted, reaction. Even if Cash App is saying 13 years old can actually enter Cash App. So right? amazing that uh, 13 year olds, the thing is, you know, in a decentralized world, there are so many 13 year old below already with their own wallets. They probably have a phantom wallet or a MetaMask wallet. Did they ever ask your age when you open that? No. So they probably own Ethereum and they don't need to wait for Square to offer it. That's the thing. Um, that's the thing. I don't know if it's even enough for a fintech to offer crypto because you have no specific special power in the space. Everyone can do it. No, no moat. As for Zoom video, I'm a contrarian here. Um, I know that everyone is saying they're getting out of all stay-at-home names. They didn't like, uh, obviously, Peloton is a short, Roku is a short. All of these are stay-at-home names. And so there is a consensus view that Zoom video is going to perhaps go down again 20% on earnings front. Um, I'm more of a contrarian bull here. So on Zoom... Um, I think that 300, you have first resistance and then 330. So if you're very careful on Zoom, you can probably exit at 300 to be safe. Um, and then we'll see. Because uh, right now, the market is of the view that it's a 250 to 300 stock, which is a trading range. How it will move from 300 to 350, Zoom has to show that remote work is a secular trend and it has nothing to do with reopening, names because obviously ako, I'll personally tell you I'm using Zoom every day so I'm conducting my classes online I have to connect with people online all over the world those things are remote work it's not something that any other platform can do for me so I could never replace my Zoom video and I would say that that's true for most everyone else in the world too we are living in a Zoomtopia world and it, and the reopening and vaccinated world does not alter that remote work world. Uh, Unity uh, would say that, you know, we have, they Unity bought Parkset, by the way, Parsec, simply because their game developers want to make Unity games remotely, not exactly in the office. So a lot of people are remote work players, and it will be very obvious when you read through their Fiverr platform earnings report. That's one of the reasons why I'm listening I'm going to listen to Fiverr platform because if people think that, that the remote work revolution is just a pandemic thing, I argue no. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a bull on, a, on, on Zoom video. Uh, I, I don't, I'm a contrarian bull on Zoom. I, I could be wrong, of course. Uh, and I, actually, the thing about earnings calls is that when you do your deep in the money call options, I would still buy it anyway if I have a long call on Zoom at 220 and 250. So let's assume Zoom video fails. What does it mean? Well, it just means that I'm, I'm, I'm holding my longs until January. I have option to buy Zoom at 220 and 250. So that, that's really what it is. Okay, so that's it. Thank you for watching and thanks for asking questions. See you again next week for our free Friday class. Of course, Wednesdays, we've got Philippines. Thursdays, about cryptocurrencies. And Fridays, about global markets. Bye-bye. Thanks.